if you'll show reverence for the reading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our reading today comes from the gospel of Luke, first chapter, 26, verse through 38. In the sixth month, the angel of Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by the words and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is six months for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In an interview, um, a gentleman named Fred Craddock was asked, who are your favorite preachers? Now Fred was named one of the most influential preachers in this country a couple years back. And he pretty much changed the way pastors preach. And he answered that there were no present day preachers that really made the cut that he was impressed by. But what he was impressed by, by the work that he sees done through a foundation of his in the Appalachian Mountains and where he goes in and teaches preachers. And he said what most impressed him was by their sense of call and their passion to bring the message of God to the people that they were chosen to shepherd. These were small, small church preachers back in the Appalachian Mountains. And Fred Craddock said that they were some of his favorites. He said, say, that there were maybe some theological problems out in the backwoods. But he said the passion that he saw is what most impressed him. Let's look over this text and, and see how it may apply to us today. Just open up in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. Now this was a small town. If you really even want to call it a town, it's more like a village. Maybe just a couple hundred people. Nothing, nothing spectacular, nothing to draw anybody's attention. Just a very small town. To a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now Mary, there's, no, there's nothing special about Mary. There's no reason to think that anything miraculous is going to happen to her. She's just a woman waiting to get married. Faithful to God. But nothing special. Nothing special at all. A simple girl from a simple village. Nothing special. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed. And of by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this may be, the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. 
Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid as a church is what we come to today. Do not be afraid for what God is about to do in your life and in this church. Do not be afraid. And now you will conceive in your womb his son. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will be called son of the most high. Lord God will give you his throne ancestor David and he will reign over Jacob. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? How can the, to the power of God and the, the favor of God and the great promises of God fall on someone so simple, so simply of what may seem unprepared? How can the Spirit of God fall on that? And how can someone step into that without fear and trepidation? How can this be since I'm a virgin? And then the, the angel said to her, and listen, this is key. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born. It's not up to you. It was not up to Mary to figure this out. The Holy Spirit was going to come in just like, this is the same Holy Spirit that's going to come in and, and create the person of Jesus in her womb just by the Holy Spirit's presence being in there. That is a, a, a large, a big statement of creation. It is the same Holy Spirit in the same instance where God spoke into existence everything that we see. It's a God of creation speaking. It's just speaking things into existence. A lot of people have a problem with, with the virgin birth. But when you think about the Holy Spirit and the power of the breath of God just coming in and speaking something into existence, He can speak into the womb of a, a, a just small child probably she was in her teenage years, and, and, and she will carry God himself, the God child. But she's scared. And then it, it goes to this. Then Mary said, and this is, this is key, here I am, Servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. I just want you to overlay <clears throat> this story onto the possibilities that we have talked about and that we share a, a, a vision that God is going to come into this congregation, to this church, and do something miraculous. Amen? We are agreement on that. But many times we're going to be afraid, and some of you might have already shadowed away and says, well, I don't know that I want to be a part of a big thing. I don't want the responsibility. I don't think I'm worthy. I don't, then you might say as a con small congregation, I don't think that we're worthy to host an event that God has called upon us. But this scripture just simply says... It doesn't matter. It's not up to us. Success or failure is not up to us. When God chooses to speak, pick something small and seemingly insignificant, things happen, not because of what we do, but because of what God can do through us. We're a small church in the country. Thank God. We never compare ourselves to other churches, bigger churches running bigger programs and, and, and got big programs, big um, Christmas pageants. Never compare ourselves to that because, when, because God can pass over those things, those churches, those, those, those institutions. If the heart of the church and the congregation is not in the right place, God can pass them over. But God can come into a small country church with a small congregation and do miraculous things. Do you believe me in that? Do you believe me in that? When we believe that and we anticipate that, what do we have to do? 
All Mary said was, I'm willing to be a vessel of the Lord. That's all God's asking for us and from us, is to be obedient and be a vessel. He will take care of the rest. When the Holy Spirit comes in here and anoints this, and what we are doing and sees our hearts in the right place, miraculous things can happen. And I believe they will. You know, we've talked about this. There are things, there's a, I believe that the Lord will use this coronavirus. We have reset. You have not been in churches. Some of your uh, working companions and things have not been in churches. I think you, you had said this is the first time you'd been in church in quite a while, in a church building. Everything's reset. Everything's reset. We're starting from scratch almost. Some of the things, I've mentioned this, some of the people who haven't been in here a while, when they come back, they may not recognize it because things may have changed. It's been that long before because some, uh, some people have not been in church. But believe that God is going to do fresh and new things. Fresh and new things. That there are traditions in, in the church, not just in the in, I'm not saying in this church, but in, in the body of Christ, maybe ha we had some things, some baggage that we need to jettison. Start thinking about new and fresh ways to worship and to praise God. We don't have to figure it out. We just have to be obedient and accept the, the Holy Spirit to come in and lead and direct us. And to feel it and accept. When His presence comes in, is to accept it and acknowledge it and embrace it. And then wait and see what God wants to do with us. And we'll read this text one more time and I'm going to read it in its entirety. But this time I want you to not look at it as an event that happened 2,000 years ago. But I want you to hear it as a proclamation and a promise from God in this day, in this present situation, in this church and in this congregation and overlay it onto our lives, our ministry and what we are called to do in this community. Now I'm going to ask you to stand to read for the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greetings this may be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month of her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Take this message, internalize it, believe it, that it applies to you. The promises made to uh, Mary are valid today. They fall on us. The Holy Spirit the guarantees of the Holy Spirit, the promises of we are obedient, the declaration that He was going to do great things through her applies to us. He's going to do great things through us. Through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and our obedience. 
In the name of our Lord, amen. 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 If you'll remain standing, Rhonda. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 